Was that a go? <laughs> All right. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to the uh, CTC Scholarship Workshop. We are going to have Wendy Martell join us in a little bit, and she'll be here to answer your questions. But we're going to cover some tips and tricks on um, how to win a scholarship. Also, we're going to go over how to apply for a scholarship here at CTC and some tricks on how to um, uh, get a scholarship that's outside of CTC. So we are going to be getting started. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. All righty. So you have found the scholarship workshop and I hope today that um, we will be able to help you with some questions. We have some questions at the very end and we are, um, we're going to welcome your questions. Make sure you put them in the comment section. All right. So why are you this out of the way or not? Why are you applying for scholarships? Well, do you need money? There are scholarships here that are 200 to $10,000. Uh, CTC is trying to help you to afford to go to college. They have many ways that they can help you. We've got our Eagle's Nest that helps with food, uh, Eagle Aid. And one of the ways is the scholarship. Um, this will help for books and supplies, your tuition and also um, if you you know need uniforms or for um, the allied health or culinary, they will help you with all of that. So it's money. We're going to try to get that money to you and we're going to give you ways to win it. So these are the steps. If you are not already a current student, you're going to have to apply to CTC in order to go ahead and get a scholarship. We have had some high schools that have asked us about um, when can their students apply. Their students have got to be able to apply um, for financial aid, which means that they have to um, wait until they're able to do that. And that means wait until um, they're going to be applying for college. Uh, the, the next step is they're going to need to get, once they apply, they're going to get an Eagle Mail and they're going to need to use their Eagle Mail for the um, scholarship emails back and forth. And I'm going to show you all that in a second where you can find all that. Then the next thing they're going to have to do is to uh, complete a FAFSA application. Um, this is something they're going to have to do. It is not mandatory. Some of the um, scholarships do not require a financial needs based scholarship, you know, but go ahead and do it anyway. And um, you're going to go to our scholarship page. So let me show you where all of these are. When you first get to CTC, you're going to go to students and getting started. You are going to have the apply for admission and a lot of other information, you know, like talking to an academic advisor. Um, the registration is going to be on that page. The next step that we said, once you apply and you get into the college, they're going to give you an Eagle mail. And this is where you're going to find the Eagle Mail. The Eagle Mail is going to be, um, if you don't want to use Eagle Mail, you can go ahead and forward your Eagle Mail to any personal email, and that would be here. The next thing was that financial aid, and you will find that FAFSA application down here. And you go ahead and fill that out. If you uh, or your parents 
file the tax return, it is extremely easy to go ahead and get set up with the FAFSA. FAFSA, because what they do, and I've done it myself because I've taken classes here, is they will take your um, tax information. So it, it doesn't take very long to go ahead and fill that out, and it's probably a good idea to go ahead and um, get that started as well on your uh, journey to do a scholarship. And I see that Wendy has joined us. Welcome, Wendy. We are just getting started. The next thing that I showed you in the PowerPoint was um, where are you going to start for the scholarships? Go to students, go to scholarships. That is going to bring you to our scholarships page. Now, here's where you're going to have to remember something. We are moving from academic works to award spring. Therefore, we're going to show you the page um, with that has the scholarships right now in academic works. But then I'm going to move you over to uh, and show you the other scholarship page, and that is going to be the um, the scholarship driver that we're going to be using. But for right now, this will. This is an idea of some of the scholarships that we have. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of money. Now, as you can also see, it is saying ended. We are not in the scholarship phase right now. The scholarship phase um, is uh, going to be starting in the school year, uh, the February. Wendy, are you there to be able to talk? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. What are the okay. what are the dates of our next scholarship cycle that they when okay, they can the apply? Next, the next application window is going to open January 15th and it'll go through the end of February. Okay. So that's when you will be able to come and see the opportunities. It's going to give you um you know, more information, there's going to be more scholarships uploaded. Also, and I, I know that this is going to be, or Wendy, correct me, on our new award springs, um, you're, you're going to also put the external um, scholarships as we, well, right? We don't have the ability at this time. Oh, it's something okay. that award spring is working on. Okay. Um, but they students can contact the financial aid office and uh, get them any information on outside scholarships. Uh, okay. as, soon as, we, as soon as we are capable of doing that, it will announce it and send out a mass email so everybody knows it's available. Okay. Um, we, will, we will hold a campaign to um, an information campaign with marketing when the site goes live. So students can go ahead and start registering for the site and then they can get into the application quicker when they when it goes live. All right. Okay. So, so we, when it does go live, you're going to be, they're going to, we're going to have a, um, a link for you to go to. Um, and this is what you're going to come up with or something similar to this. Again, like Wendy said, they are um, uh, going to be creating the site. You're going to have to first uh, sign up. And on the the award spring site, and um, you're gonna get a password set. Your password, if you've got Eagle Mail, put the Eagle Mail in there, and then they can go ahead and um, you know they'll correspond that way. Once you set up the account, then um, you create the account, and this is the phone version. I'm going to be showing you both the desktop version and the phone version. Um, of course, make sure you hit that. It's not going to go anywhere if you don't accept all their policies and their policies are like a million miles long. Um, you're going to access your CTC email and you have to confirm your email address in Eagle Mail. So don't forget that step. At that point, um, the, I'm going to, talk right now about the 
the scholarship and about the things that you can do to prepare before you apply. Don't get into the application before you have um, done a lot of these other steps and have these steps ready um, for when you go to apply, okay? However, once you get into the application, there is a time period where you can go ahead and um, uh, edit it. But if you've got all your ducks in a row before you're, before you actually get into the application, it'll it'll go a lot smoother. So you're only going to need to do one application, and that's for all the scholarships. Um, so we're going to kind of set you up on how you know how to answer the um, the questions so that you can broaden your uh, amount of scholarships that you can go ahead and um, pursue. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna teach you about keywords and that will be actually the key to getting more scholarships or um, qualifying for more scholarships. All right, so again, we're gonna help you with writing the answers um, on the application and the essay. All right, and I've got like this thingy in the way that I want to move. There we go. So please, please, please answer all the questions. Um, Wendy Martell here is the person who is going to be looking at your scholarships. And we have based this scholarship on problems, um, the scholarship workshop on problems. Um, if you don't answer all the questions, um, if you, you know, don't answer in complete sentences. If you don't answer things, she cannot process your application and you're going to go to the bottom of the rung there. So make sure you answer all the questions. You don't leave anything blank. Use um, not applicable if a question doesn't apply to you. Okay. When you Cindy, do, yes. Cindy, that's a very important answer, a point right there that. The, the, the way the systems are set up is if there's not an answer in there, it can't score the scholarship or it can't score the application. So if there's no answer, it automatically deletes that application from the scoring process. And it's not okay. even. Okay. All right. So you heard that directly from Wendy. Um, we're trying to help you. So you've got to keep track of all this. We actually have um, a copy of this PowerPoint and I spoke with Michelle today um, about possibly embedding this, um, this video that we're doing today on the foundations. And so Wendy, if you're just first hearing that, <laughs> we, we yeah. might, she's looked into first it. Yeah. Heard, but that's so, great. Yeah, okay, all right. So the next and important they're always thing, welcome to call the office and they're also welcome to call the office at any point during their application process and call and uh, get answers if they have questions about the yes. application. Yes, we actually put in the uh, comment section your email. <laughs> Oop, that was okay. Um, so, all right. So as we're going down, when you get to the essay part, do not, do not put your name. This is um, uh, not who knows what. This is purely, Wendy is reading it for um, content, for grammar. She is wanting to find out who is going to be a good representation, representative of the scholarships and therefore do not put your name on it. We say this at every scholarship workshop and people send in their essays with their names. Please don't do that. Okay. I and, and this too, Cindy. This is a. These are the scholarships are reviewed by a committee, so there's no. We want no partiality. Yes. We want to be completely transparent when we give these scholarships applications to the reviewers, and they read them and they rate them based on their merit, not on who they know or what they know. Right, right. So you have Very equal important. chance, guys, and it is all up to you. So when you're writing your answers to your uh, the questions as well as your essay, 
please use correct grammar. If you do not really know what correct grammar is, then you need to have someone read it. The library has a research paper mentoring that would be more than welcome to more than happy to check your grammar. The academic studio also um, there are a lot of people here on campus that will help you. Um, we are not going to do your paper for you. We're going to not do your essay for you, but we're we will send it through like um, Grammarly or something so that you can have the best grammar. All right. Um, my little box keeps moving around. Okay, um, make sure that your answers pertain to your questions. That means please read the question fully. Um, you know, don't just read the first three words in the question, which I know happens. And um, you've, you've got to see what is being asked and then go ahead and answer it in a complete sentence. Um, very important, guys. There is the spoken communication and there is written communication. And that makes a big difference. Um, you know, I know when you speak, you can be exciting and you know exclamation points you can use uh incomplete sentences when you're speaking do not do that when you are writing make sure that the writing is is more proper um make sure that it is um something that your reader can understand also um some of the things that you'll need to include in your essay and I'm going to show you when I when I show you there um, the award spring site again. I'm going to show you that there's a little section to put um, your essay, and there will be a section. But um, we want to know about you. Your essay is going to set you apart from someone else who has the exact same GPA. The things that are going to set you apart are going to be, did you do any extracurricular stuff? Did you, um, do you have a, a, a degree plan? That's, if you look on um, the scholarships, almost all of them, if not maybe all of them now, Wendy, answer that one for me. It says you have to have a degree plan. Is that all of yeah. them or are there some of them that still not, still don't have that? Um, most, I think, I think every single one says you have to have an approved plan or program, um, whether it's certificate or degree. Okay. All righty. So even if you, you know, you're just getting started and you're not really sure, um, give us a goal, give us a plan, <laughs> you know, what you're going to do. Um, and yes, everybody needs money. We know that. That's why you are applying for this. So um, you're not basically telling us that it's all about getting money. We need to see that, or Wendy needs to see, and foundations needs to see that that you're going to do something other than just take the money and try to figure out what you want to be in life. Okay, we are asking that you put um, some kind of a direction in your essay. Another thing is um, these are things to avoid. A lot of times when you're writing an essay, especially if you didn't do a lot of essay writing in high school, is you make a lot of assumptions. Uh, you use slang, you use cliches. If you're in the military, you use military terms. Um, and you have to put your Put yourself in your reader's shoes. Your reader may not know what a cliche is, uh, you know, that that your meaning of the cliche may not know the military slang for it. And so try to avoid um, things like that, because if your reader is going along and reading something and then has absolutely no idea what you're talking about, you have now lost that many words. If there's a word count, You've just wasted a bunch of words in your word count. So try to avoid that. Um, also generalizations. Um, I'm a hard worker and um, I work really hard and I study a lot. And those are generalizations. Give us 
examples. Um, how, you know, how do you work hard? Do you work a second job? Uh, you know, you go to school all day and then you go to work for these many hours and, um, you know, then you come back and work on your homework for these many hours, you know, that will help your reader more understand who you are and that you are a hard worker. Um, and that will set you apart from the person next to you who said, I'm a hard worker. So be more specific. Um, also, uh, an acronyms, um, if we don't know what, it, what, you know, S W R K, whatever stands for, you've lost this again. So just spell it out and or then you could put the, an acronym after it in um, uh, parentheses and then use the an acronym after that. But we need to know, always put yourself in the reader's spot. You are trying to convince your reader that you are the best candidate for these, uh, these scholarships and therefore um, don't just blow this off. If you blow it off, guess what? They're, they have no need to, to give you attention. Okay. They're not me. They're just how many, Wendy, how many, um, scholarship applications do you get that y'all have to go through? Um, it depends. Last year we had a little over 650. Okay. So you, you have to show them that out of 650 people, you are the person for that scholarship. Okay. All right. So prepare for these questions. Um, if a question is open ended, write a complete sentence. Um, you know, make sure you get all your punctuation and logic correct. This is a librarian thing. If you're going to talk in past tense, then stay in past tense. Don't keep flip flopping past and present unless it calls for it. You know, you may be talking about when you had a job and you did this. Okay, but now you're doing this. Just kind of keep an eye on your tenses. Um, I, it's a librarian thing. Um, also, besides your story, which is what you are imparting to them on how you are, you know, this is what you're going to do. This is what you have done. And this is what you plan to do in the future. You're also showcasing your writing ability because if you're going to be a representative for CTC um, and you don't want to write in complete sentences, that is not going to look very well that CTC's scholarship people can't write in complete sentences. So make sure you become a good representative for us. Um, now, keywords. Keywords, um, this is a, actually a librarian thing. You know how librarians will, um, you know, put in a word in the card catalog? Well, that's how we pick up on stuff. Well, these, these um, algorithms and databases and these scholarship databases also use keywords. And so they're going to be looking for specific keywords. Um, and these keywords will guide you to other scholarships. Like say, for instance, you took three years of um, piano, um, but you're not, uh, you know, you're considering piano, you know, a music degree, uh, but you're thinking right now business degree. Um, make sure you put in piano or music in there because then that will open up some scholarships for music you know and or art or leadership um we have a a, a club here called net impact and that's you know entrepreneurship did you have a lemonade stand were you in the girl scouts or the boy scouts um you know did you go on a mission trip with your church uh this is information that shows the um, that that shows the uh, people here that you have gotten involved in extracurricular stuff, and all this needs to be in as keywords. Okay, um, and there may be a scholarship out there that you didn't even think of. 
And if you put all these things that pertain to you in these keywords, that will go ahead and pick up the, um, the scholarship. Is that still going to be with the new one, um, Wendy? I know the old one automatically through the keywords offered more scholarships. Um, that I'm not, I think it's going to go by the questions that are asked. The essay is going to be more for the tie breaking, um, because it's scored separately from the qualifications. Okay, so but I'll check um, on that and make sure. Right, so that tells you right there if you've got an open ended question in those questions and answers, put those keywords in there as well because that algorithm will pick up your um your information and will open up more now be truthful and be honest you know if you've never played keyboard don't put in i've played keyboard <laughs> just you know just to get more scholarships because that's just not helpful all right okay now here's another thing about keywords and i forgot to go back and uh, highlight that last line keywords are important as well when you when we go over the outside scholarships in this workshop. Um, keywords you can get from the outside scholarships, mission statements, and about us. And I will show you that later. Always make sure in their scholarships, the outside scholarships, that you use their keywords. And again, I'll go over that. All righty, how can I stress keywords more? <laughs> This is how you do it. Anything you've done, um, uh, e either in a lot of classes you've majored in in high school or before, uh, or if you have a degree in another college, make sure all of this gets put into your um, your answers and your essays. All right, um, and ha have I harped on keywords enough? Let me move on. <laughs> Alrighty, so you're going to prepare for the essay. This little box is just keeps getting in my way. All right. Before you write, make sure you're relaxed. It's not a good idea if you're a, a mom and um, your kids are screaming and running around. I personally got one of my degrees with kids screaming and running around and I did it at 2 a.m. I don't know how I survived. Um, but try to find the best. The library is a quiet place, you know, somewhere where you can get your thoughts together and write it. Um, they're wanting to know in the essay about you. Um, it's great if you give them background information, like you talk about this particular um, uh, nonprofit that you volunteered for. Um, you can give a little bit of background information of what that nonprofit does. Um, but remember, this ex this essay is about you and why you are the right spokesperson for them. Okay, so. Your essay is going to basically um, ask you a question and you answer the question and you answer the question in what feels comfortable for you. Um, if you're passionate about something, make sure that gets put in there. You know, if you worked particularly at a, for some nonprofit um, volunteer thing and you, you felt personally that it gave you a lot of value and that's what spurred you to come to college and to, um, uh, you know, go into this field or whatever, that that's stuff you put in. That is helping Wendy and the committee see exactly who you are in the process of um, getting this scholarship. Um, in, in telling your story, you know, there's, you know, if you've, you know, had a tough life and you generalize, I had a tough life, that's not helpful. So it's better if you use detail and examples, you know, like I know some people who grew up in the military and they're, they were constantly moving from place to place to place and they had to pick up and it was different, different um, uh, schools and they had to catch up and they didn't have friends or they got bullied or something like that. Um, but then they found ways to, um, to overcome that. 
I'm not saying everybody has a, a hard life. I'm just saying that if you did have adversity in your life, um, we we want to see, they want to see, not me. I'm, I don't see them at all. But um, they want to see how you've solved some of those problems. Um, how do you overcome it? Um, because what they're looking to, to see to make sure is the minute you have a problem, are you going to quit school? That's that's not what this is all about. It is about, or if you come up to a problem, if you come up to something, or you are you going to find ways to solve it? Are you going to reach out to the college? Are you going to you going to just like not speak to anyone and just quit? Or are you do you have the capability of talking to student life or talking to someone? It's like, hey, please solve my problem. That's what they want to see. And that's why the examples and the detail work, because it gives them an idea of basically how you're going to solve the problems. And they want to know that that their scholarship recipient um, is someone who's going to, you know, stick with this and continue on with their schoolwork. So, um, you know, this isn't only getting through filling out the paperwork and getting the money. This is about, they want to know how you're going to make it through CTC and make it in, in your future. Okay. All right. Um, and what I mean by be humble, but not self-deprecating is, you know, sometimes there's, there's different ways people go about doing things and people will say you know like um they, they, they tend to put themselves down they don't even think about it they tend to put themselves down or they um go the other direction and they will say i'm the greatest you need to give me a a scholarship because i'm the greatest person and so um uh Sorry about that. And kind of be in between there. You know, I mean, you know, there's humility and being humble. And um, then there is, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm a really terrible person. Just find your, your equal ground there. All right. And then um, that be grateful. Um, you know, there's always a positive somewhere. There's usually a positive in everything in life, even in the worst times. And I'm not saying go be a rainbow unicorn person. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but know that everybody else who is applying for this scholarship has struggled. You're not the only person in the world who has struggled. And therefore, um, because everybody else has some, you know, adversity in their life, um, you can um, uh, go ahead and 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 uh, you can you can make it. You can do it if if you just find the ways to do it. Okay, I'm sorry, I got on a soapbox. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, um, and yes, this is not a gripe session. Wendy doesn't want to hear. Um, just a whole essay of how sad your your life is. <laughs> Make sure you you spend some positive in there, okay? Um, and make sure that you also talk about how you've overcome stuff. All right, I thought I was finished with this soapbox, but I am not. So, all right, be confident. Um, you know, make sure that you uh, will, you know, assure them on this committee on this scholarship committee that um, you have ways to solve problems and go ahead and use those examples and put them in your um, your essay or your your questions all right so now I'm that I've busy harped on you on that I'm going to show you what the award spring um, site is going to look like so once you have, I, I'm sorry, I keep moving the window all over. <laughs> once you have um, opened your account, 
you're going to find the scholarship page and you're going to look through all the scholarships. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, when do y'all have one date that all the scholarships are going to be due, correct? Yes, she, you're shaking your head, yes. But I have no sale, Wendy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. There was a conversation going on in the hall. I didn't want it to bother oh, you. That, that's um, okay. All right. So yeah. there will be um, an award, and you will be able to click on each one of these scholarships, and it will give you more detail. Some of these scholarships have different things they need you to do, like the library scholarship. And um, we put ours in every year as well. One of our stipulations for the library scholarship is that you have attended a library event uh, or come into Byways, which is our published journal. The We keep record. Now, to give you an idea, Wendy sent me uh, a list of all the people for our library scholarship. And only the people who registered for a library event or was in byways was eligible. So she was like, how did you get that back to me in five minutes? Basically what I did was I went into the, uh, the register for events spreadsheet and I pulled up names and only the names who were at our events and I matched it to her list really quick and then I went through it again and I, I found was like 10 people who had registered for an event at that point I looked at that list of 10 people and I found two or three that attended more than one event and was in byways and then I sent what like a handful five yeah. minutes back to Wendy and that's how the library does it. So if you don't open these and see what they require, you're gonna get kicked out because all the rest of those people got kicked out of our scholarship. So it is very important that you open the ones that you're interested in and read what they want. If they want a letter of recommendation, you'll have to do that. If they want a resume, you're gonna have to do that. I know that, I don't know if we've had that with ours here, but I've been looking at the um, award spring site and they have all kinds of links for any of that. So if anybody ever requests those, you're only going to know it if you open it to see what they were, you know, they require. All right, here's some of the examples that we have of our scholarships. That's from the page I showed you at the beginning. Again, look at the money, guys. It's like a lot of money. All right, so on um, award spring, you're going to start the application. Make sure you have all your ducks in a row, all written down, all the, you know, what you've participated in, your essay, whatever, all of that ready. So what's really good about Award Spring is it'll keep you on track because it'll tell you how many items to complete. First, you'll do your general information. Make sure you've got all this information. Um, I did not, by the way, put Funky Town because <laughs> <laughs> I contacted them and got all their stuff from them. Um, this is the um, the view. If you're on a phone, you're going to have personal background, academic history, financial information, and qualification questions. Your your high school and education. All right, with the financial information. Um, Wendy, if they filled out the FAFSA, will they, that already be in there or we, do you know if you're going to have to put in your own financial information? Um, it depends on how we set the system up. Uh, currently, I know that it will be, um, will import some of the information from the colleague system that uh, houses the financial aid information. So some of that information will be imported in through that system. Um, at this time, we don't have anything set up that will be financial um, questions for the students. Uh, that may change. Um, we, If you don't fill out an application with the FAFSA, you do not qualify for certain uh, scholarships. 
because we don't have any financial information. If it's a scholarship that requires um, a financial need and you don't have a FAFSA on file, then we can't score it. So I'm trying to find ways around that so that we can get everyone included in it, even if they don't file for a FAFSA, um, for those that are don't qualify, that don't uh, require it. So okay. it could wow. be changing. Um, it's just the first year is going to be kind of a trial and error to see how it works. Um, we'll go from there. But okay. if you have questions, just give us a call and, and we're going to work through it. This system is much more detailed than the last system we used. So I'm hoping it's going to work a little better for us. Yeah, and and um, it is. I, I did like a trial run with the company um, just to, you know, show all this to you. And um, it's very easy to use. Um, and as for your like your high school GPA, guys, don't guess. Go find it. <laughs> Go find out your scores. Um, and then if you'll notice at the bottom here, they're asking things like sports because they're asking for your extracurricular stuff. So make sure all of that is um, is there ready for your um, your application. And so, Cindy, another point that might be that they want to go in and look at the application, make notes of what uh, what items are needed so they can go and gather the information before they actually sit down and start filling it out. Yes, um, we don't have sports here at CTC, so we don't have anything that qualifies with sports, but there may be something, um, an agricultural program or a nursing program or something that they participated in high school that will help um, with applicate or with their scholarship application for college. So. It might be yeah. a good idea just to go in and, and read through it and see what all you need and you know otherwise you're going to maybe spend in your wheels again stuff that you don't need right um the high school gpa just a side note here if, it, if there's many scholarships that are for incoming freshmen and they they ask for the gpa for the high school gpa if you don't if you're not an incoming freshman just put an na in there you don't need to worry about looking that up um okay. it's not going to be used because your graduation date is going to be beyond the the use yeah, <laughs> I agree with that because <laughs> it's like, please don't make me find my ACT. I have no clue. Yeah. So, all right. All right. So everybody heard that. That's that's good. So again, it'll continue to keep telling you what you've done. If you've not filled everything out, it's going to walk you through it and it's going to tell you how many more items need to be completed. Um, it is just very simple answering the questions. Um, then the qualification question is if if you've got um, some some type of a, a one of the scholarships ask you for something. But this again is they're building the site, and just because you see it here doesn't mean it's going to be actually on the final site that is created for us. Right. So, all right. Then we'll you're actually get to see our first glimpse of it next week. So I'm excited Yay. to see that. Yay. It's a shame we didn't get it done. <laughs> I know. It's okay. It's okay. We're, we're, they were very cooperative in helping us here. So, okay. So then you got to submit your application. Um, oops, not quite done yet. You've got to do something else. And you go ahead and complete it. All right. And um, this particular uh, example that they gave me, you know, they wanted um, a little section and uh, why are you the best candidate? Okay, do you see that very open-ended question? Well, it's not a question, it's a statement. <laughs> but it's they're saying, why are you the best candidate? These are things that they're wanting to know. And so start thinking now about why you would be the best candidate. Okay, all right. So when you're done, zero items requiring completion, you can always go back after it and, and work with it. Correct, Wendy, after you've done it? I believe so. That's something I'll have to check on next week. But uh, in the past, that's what's it's been the case. Okay, all right. Yeah, until usually until the application is closed uh, okay. for and submissions, then you can go back in and revise it. Okay, and I did not get a chance to ask you this, Wendy. Um, they had a section where they uh, had uh, qualifying questions about, um, you know, other things. And so there may be other ones. I don't know what Wendy's going to be putting in it. 
um, but just if it if your application does not look exactly like what I have shown you today, um, it is because we have tailored it to CTC, and um, that was just a mock up that the company had given me. So, all right. So after you at, you uh, apply, you need to monitor your email for further instructions. Make sure you don't forget about your email. Okay, you have got to be um, now this. It says spring awards will be made by June 1st. That is not correct. I shouldn't have taken that out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Let's move on. Um, I thought I had taken everything out. So if you're awarded, or even if you are not awarded, the committee has taken time to read your application and to read your essay. Um, it's really a good idea to send a thank you letter. Um, you know, again, this is a mutual respect thing they're going to respect your ability to go to college and you respect the fact that they have 650 applications and um so it would be really a great idea to write a thank you letter either way okay and i'm shooting for more applications this year yeah. so just so, so just so the students know that there's be more qualified or more candidates that okay all right so and we don't and the way that they do it, it's a scoring system. So if you've won a scholarship, you actually get more points. Again, is it still the same point yes. system? Okay. Yes. So yep. the more scholarships you win, the more points you get. <laughs> so it's a good idea to just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And once you get that scholarship, you get a point for getting a scholarship because that's pretty much code for them going, well, this person is a great representative this person is going to work toward his or her goals so we've already seen that this person is um is a good candidate for a scholarship and so as long as you as long as you stay eligible and meet the qualifications yes yes like don't slack off one semester and get a gpa of 0 0.04 right not gonna work so all right so we've talked about our um uh ctc and we've i've had a lot of high school um people parents and schools actually contact me before this workshop and they were asking about um you know outside scholarships as well there are many so many scholarships um that businesses offer um that um let me i'm gonna zip through um whoops don't know why that didn't do that. All right. Um, which one? Do y'all see? Okay. All right. All of a sudden, I got a second screen, and I don't know which one is showing. Screen one. Okay. So um, the library has a lot of databases and um, resources for you to find scholarships, and we also have updated books. Um, the foundation's office, as you saw when I first started, had an outside opportunities as well. So you have more than enough resources to find scholarships. So, you know, between foundations and the library, we can give you lists upon lists upon lists upon lists. What I'm going to teach you here is the best way to, to not waste your time with stuff. Um, if you are looking for an outside scholarship that is is not connected to CTC, you're going to have to get really good at looking for keywords. Um, you're just going to come up with a paragraph and it's going to say there is um, here is the scholarship. Then you have to look for keywords. They're looking for creative minds and innovative technologies. That's their their mission. OK, so if you're a person who very rarely when people say, can you be creative and come up with this and you go, no, I'm not, then maybe this is not right for you. If you don't know how to use technologies, maybe this company is not right for you. Um, so the keywords are going to keep you from wasting your time and only looking for what will be a good fit for you. So one of the ways to um, find a good fit is to read their description of their scholarship. Look at their website. I'm going to zone in on this um, uh, 
this little red box in a second. Read their mission statements. Read their about us. Read what they have done. Look up their, their scholarship candidates because the scholarship candidates, um, you know, what have they done in the past? Read their background and don't copy their background, but that will give you an idea of the things they're looking for. All right, so for their mission statement, um, uh, they empower people to enhance health and hunger, overcome hardship. Okay, so if you've worked with a nonprofit and you were in a food drive, that would be something you would put in there because that's what they're all about. Um, their vision is to help people help themselves, get them out of poverty. Uh, if you have, if you've gone on a church mission trip somewhere else to help people, make sure that gets put into your essay. Um, they're looking for creative people who think positively. Don't sit there in your essay and talk about um, uh, how you have, uh, you know, all these things that happen in your life, but forget to put the part about how you overcame them. Um, they also, if you keep blaming people in your essay, you see here where it says core values, they've got accountability. Well, that means they want people who are going to take personal responsibility for their, their mistakes and someone who's going to learn to correct their mistakes. So it's very important that you know who it is that your donor is going to be. Um, again, you know, when you look at an essay, essay I mean, um, scholarship uh, blurb, the first thing you see is 10,000. Ooh, I want that. But you didn't look. You got to look down. All right. Well, this person, this one needs GPA of 3.0 and demonstrate financial need. So, you know, fill out that FAFSA. Make sure you have a GPA of 3.0 or above. I don't know why I have all the colors. <laughs> I guess that's just, you know, because I didn't, I'm not very detail oriented and I've just got all these colors. All right. Um, this one has admitted to uh, this college, uh, be active in community services, good communication skills. If you're a type of a person, you're, um, you know, you wait for people to talk to you before you talk to them. Well, maybe this one isn't all that great for you. You know, maybe they're looking for somebody who's more of an outspoken person. So you've got to read what it is you're applying for. All right. So you basically see this big thing and all your eyes go to is $250,000. Whoa, I need this one. All right. Well, did you see that you have to be from that high school and it has to be in this degree and um, your school must nominate you? So it's much harder, but it's not impossible to get outside scholarships. CTC and the foundation's office will help you with, you know, whatever's connected to us, but these outside scholarships, you've got to do the groundwork and make sure that you don't waste their time or yours. Um, again, CTC, li the library, we have books, we have uh, eBooks, we have databases that will list the very, latest scholarships. I used to talk with, um, cause I used to do a scholarship workshop thing and the, the donors would say the biggest problem is people don't ever apply. When you have two people applying for a scholarship, that's really, it, it's good for you, but it's sad for a company. <laughs> it's just that people don't know there are scholarships out there. So if you just give up and go, I didn't get this scholarship. Well, guess what? There's a million more out there. Just go for it and, you know, go for it. And then if you don't get this one, then go for the next one, improve it and figure out what, what caused you to not get that one and do it differently the next time. Okay. All right. Some of the questions that people have been asking me, they've been wanting to know um, if their high schooler is eligible and i asked wendy and she said they must be eligible for fafsa so that's our high school students correct they've got to be yes and okay. th by being eligible for fafsa that means they have to be a high school graduate high school graduate okay yeah. so there's your answer um our um scholarship application open january 15th to february 28th is that correct yes correct she emailed me stuff um, and they're offered in uh, 
the actual awards are offered in late May. Is that when our recipients are going to get the award? Do they get um, an email saying they did not get the award? They will, but it won't be until much later because we try to fill those spots for the ones that don't meet the qualifications. For the, if they don't do their thank you letter, if they don't accept the offer, then I have to go back in and go through the scores again and see who's eligible, who's the next eligible student. So all right, I'm so working, I'm trying to work on a system to get that where it's a little more clear. But so guys, now, check your email. Yeah. If you missed five thousand dollars scholarship because you didn't check your email, that's on you. <laughs> and when will had, eventually give it to someone else. <laughs> I had uh, six different people this year that did not get their scholarships because they did not accept them because they never checked their email. And by the time they got in touch with me, I had already awarded them to someone else and didn't have any funds that were available for them. Okay, so, so, so the guys, lines are there for a reason. Okay, um, and the requirements now, I, I this was a qu couple of questions that I had sent for Wendy and she answered back. Um, all our scholarships require a minimum of GPA of 2.0 and a minimum credit hours of three per semester. Is that correct again still? That's that's still correct. Yes, that's that's actually in the charter of the foundation. That's our that's our minimum requirements. Okay, and um, there uh, if there are other requirements like the library, for instance, um, it's going to be in the list of um, uh, what you know the the scholarships. Yeah, in the um, description of the scholarship. Right. And uh, if you want a copy of this presentation, go ahead and email. And we put this in the comments, reference requests, and I can go ahead and um, send that, you know, um, PowerPoint to you guys. We also put Wendy's email, which without her permission, that's fine, Wendy, um, in there. Now, does anybody have any questions? Wendy's here to answer your questions. Uh, any questions about what we've shown you today? That would be Janice telling us. No, I was refreshing to make sure. <laughs> no questions. All right. Well, um, again, we were talking about putting this video. This video will be on YouTube. It'll be here at Facebook. Uh, we were talking um, earlier about maybe putting it on the foundations. Um, Wendy's email, you can call them. I promise you they don't bite. Um, they're there to help you guys. Um, the foundations department here on campus is is all about you guys staying in school. And we're going to they're going to help in any way they can. I know they do food drives. They do everything over there and. Um, and whether it's scholarship related or it's uh, emergency assistance, um, the food pantry, you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you as a student. So contact us. If we can't help you, we'll find somebody that can or give you some outside resources outside of the CTC that can help you. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. All righty. Well, um, thank you guys for, um, for, you know, participating. A very important, I put in the, um, hang on, I'm going to share something with you guys because I don't know how many times I have to tell you all this. <laughs> hang on. This is where you on our library. CTC site. You go to events. Event flyers. And you register for all of these events and watch them. Don't just register for them. And if you get involved in our contests, if you get involved in our byways, um, all of that will help you toward our scholarship. So that is also in the comments list. All right. Well, Wendy. Thank you once again for having uh, another scholarship workshop with us. And, um, you know, you guys are awesome over there and we truly appreciate it. Um, we appreciate all that you do for us and our students. Awesome. Awesome. And Denise, thank you so much for live streaming this. And um, 
we'll see you guys at the beginning of the next semester. <laughs> we'll have the actual site Yay. All, all set up to show you. So, all right. So, Wendy, I mean, uh, Janice, if you will take us out. Bye, guys. You guys have a great day. We've got a lot of events.